So in the previous video, we came up with some expressions for the input and output autocorrelation function, specifically the cross-correlation function. We came up with an expression. What we're going to do now is we're going to specialize those expressions for the special case of being either wide sense stationary or having a time invariant system. So we're going to start with these starting equations that we had in the last video and work on them for these special cases. So first let's focus on wide sense stationary. So for wide sense stationary, here's what we had for the cross correlation from the last video. We were able to write this general expression that the cross correlation function between y and x at time t and s was equal to this integral expression. Well, I can simplify this integral expression here on the right if I assume that I have a wide sense stationary input random process. So what does that mean? That means that this autocorrelation function, which for a general random process is two-dimensional, simplifies to being a one-dimensional time function. So I can actually rewrite that as r sub x tau minus s. So this simplification here is due to the fact that we're assuming a wide sense stationary input random process. And I can simplify this a little bit more. We know that the autocorrelation function is always an even function. So Rx at time tau minus s is the exact same value as the autocorrelation function at the negative of this argument. The negative of that argument is s minus tau. So this is just an equivalent way to write this second line using the fact that this autocorrelation function for any random process is always an even function. So now we're going to do a little change of variable to, to pretty this up just a little bit. I'm going to replace s minus tau with the variable alpha. So if alpha is s minus tau, that means the derivative of alpha with respect to tau is a negative d tau. Also, when tau is a negative infinity, I have to replace this limit right here. When tau is a negative infinity, then I would get in this equation s minus a negative infinity is s plus infinity or infinity. So when tau is a negative infinity, alpha is infinity. And similarly, when tau is a positive infinity, from this equation here, we would have s minus infinity, so alpha would be a negative infinity. So this piece of information, this piece of information, and this piece of information tell us what we need to replace this, this, and this with the respective alpha quantities. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, if you just rearrange this algebraically and solve for tau, it's easy to see that tau is equal to s minus alpha, because we need to get rid of this tau here as well. So let's go ahead and replace each one of those pieces. The cross-correlation function can now be written as an integral from infinity to negative infinity, because I had those solved right here. It's h of t comma tau is equal to s minus alpha. That's the equivalent alpha version of tau right now and then Rx of alpha, because alpha is indeed equal to s minus tau. And then I need to replace the d tau with a negative d alpha. So if I do that, I get a negative sign out front. So you can see I now have a negative of this integral. When we know how to do calculus, if I have the negative of the integral, I can get rid of the negative sign and just flip the limits of integration. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now this is written in a more conventional way, where the bottom limit is the negative part, and the top limit is the more positive part. And if we look at this, this looks just like a convolution. For some fixed t, what I have here is really a convolution in the alpha domain. That's exactly what I have here. So the cross-correlation function for the special case of a wide sense stationary input can be computed by simply convolving my impulse response with my autocorrelation function for some fixed value of t. If I want to know what this cross-correlation is for a different time t, well, fix t, and then do convolution in the s domain. So this is kind of a nice, compact expression that we've attained by assuming the input random process was wide sense stationary. Let's go ahead and do something similar now for assuming time invariance of the system. So we're going to start with our starting expression. This is what we had here in general for the cross-correlation function. I've written this whole thing out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that we have a time-invariant system. So if I have a time-invariant system, my impulse responses are not two-dimensional, they're one-dimensional. So instead of h of s comma lambda, I have h of s minus lambda. Similarly, h of t comma tau becomes h of t minus tau. 
and then the autocorrelation function remains the same. I'm not assuming why it's in stationary here. I'm assuming just a time invariant system. Let's go ahead and do some change of variables. I'll let alpha equal s minus lambda. I'll let alpha equal this variable right here. Well, if alpha is indeed equal to s minus lambda, that means solving for lambda, that it is equal to s minus alpha. d lambda then is equal to negative d alpha. So we're going to have the same kind of negative of the positive to negative infinity integral like we had last time, which we know will just end up being the integral from minus infinity to infinity. So this is the same trick that we had just on the previous slide. If I do the same thing for this coordinate, if I replace beta with t minus tau, then I can solve for tau is equal to t minus beta just by rearranging that equation. Take the derivative of both sides, d tau is equal to negative d beta. So again, it's the same negative integral trick. I'll just use my calculus and I'll flip the limits again. So I've done the same type of um, variable substitution as I did previously. I just had to do it twice. So now I can rewrite this integral as the double integral from minus infinity to infinity, but now this is h of alpha. This is h of beta. This forced coordinate was tau, and we know that tau is equal to t minus beta. And then the second coordinate was lambda, and we know that lambda is equal to s minus lambda and then d alpha, d beta. So for the case of a time invariant system, this is what I get for the cross correlation function between the input and the output. So this one we're not gonna do anything further, we're not gonna simplify anymore, we're gonna just keep this kind of boxed in right here as a special result, and this is about as simple as it can get for now for the case of a time invariant system. So you'll note what we've done here. We've treated wide sense stationary and time invariance very independently. We did math assuming just wide sense stationary, and then we did math assuming just time invariant. We came up with these two new expressions that we've boxed in on the respective slides. What we want to do now is combine these. Let's consider the case when we have a wide sense stationary input and a time invariant system. That's what we'll do in the next video. We'll combine these results and work it out for that special combined case.